Alrighty, we are back on track with Iberian Sun. This is the first episode I'm recording with my new computer. So hopefully all the lag and all the other issues are behind us. That being said, we have two very hard games coming up in today's episode. So without further ado, let's continue our journey with FC Porto. Hey guys, my name is Jochen and welcome to part 37 of Iberian Sun, a football manager adventure played on Google Stadia. If you're enjoying the series so far, please show me some support by liking the video and subscribe to my channel for more football manager content. Since you were last here, which was the dreadful game against Rangers, I have played three games off camera. We have won both our league games against Maritimo and Guimaraes, but as you can see in the Champions League qualifying round, mm, no bueno and to be fair Hank has a pretty decent squad if, especially if you compare it to real life we weren't getting dominated or anything in that game we had more possession but still we lost that game three to two at least we have scored two away goals because those might prove to be very important when we play that second leg in a minute we will also, in this episode, do the hardest home game of the season in the league against Benfica. If we have a quick look at the league table, we are currently in third position with 9 points. Lusitania La Rosa is right up there with us, although we have one game in hand on them. So the game against Benfica is quite important because if they beat us, hmm, we are immediately 6 points behind them. And I don't want that this early in the season. But let us first focus on the very important game against Hank in the Champions League. We only have Watiao who is not available or at least not match fun enough to join us. But apart from him, everyone is here. So, the squad to face Hank. Diogo Costa in goal, Felipe Jonathan, Leite, Denier and Sardella as our back four, Danilo and Vitinha in midfield, Soteldo on the left wing, Josenir, Brazilian wonder kid, on the right wing, and Greenwood and Nunez as our striker duo. And as I mentioned, Yang, they have a pretty decent squad, to be honest. They have, for example, Kenneth Taylor, who is a very good player coming from Ajax for 16.25 million pounds. Can't see him do that in real life. But I mean, that's just an example. They have a lot of good players. Look at this guy, Usman Kamara, a new gen. Look at these physical stats. And I mean, it just says forward here, but I am pretty sure we are looking at a proper wonder kid. That being said, let's go to the dressing room. Uh, remind the team, yes, don't mind if I do, Vitor. Bam. That's what I'm talking about. Hand over and team talk. Let's go. First highlight of the game, a throw-in for Racing Yank. Horta with the ball to Kenneth Taylor. There he is. Lukumi now. To no idea what that guy's name was, but Sardella collects it deep on the right side of the pitch. To Brazilian wonderkin Josenir. Come on, man. Cuts inside a little bit. That's an awesome ball to Greenwood. Oh, what an awesome goal that was. Damn. Fifth goal of the season and a... Wow, did you see that assist? I mean, snap, look at this. Takes his time though, and then, ba -bam, there it is. Oh. Wow, Greenwood with an awesome ball control and then just hammers it in the back of the net. We are 1-0 up after 6.5 minutes of play, guys. I like it. And as I mentioned, it's a very good thing probably that we have scored the two away goals because, hmm... Things are looking a little bit brighter at this point. We are 25 minutes in. Not a single highlight has appeared after the goal. There we go. Second highlight. Throw in once again on the same side of the pitch for Yank. Taylor with the ball to Lukumi. It seems like a replay of the first highlight. And I hope so because then we are 2-0 up in about a minute. But it doesn't seem that that is going to happen. Ooh, Horta. I think he hit the post there and Denier clears it and hoofs it into the stands. Corner kick now for Gang. Tuck set with the outswinging ball but gets headed away. Josenir with a lot of room and he is a pacey guy so 
immediately gives it to Greenwood. Yes, sir, Bob Mason. Hmm. Sixth goal of the season, second goal of the evening, second assist also by Josenir, our Brazilian friend. Awesome stuff, and if you if I've ever seen a fast break, this is it. I mean, damn. Good ball to Greenwood, and Greenwood does what Greenwood does best. Simply score a goal. We are 2-0 up after 35 minutes. And I am going to put my first praise out there because, to be honest, I didn't expect this. And they have to score two times now because if we draw, they are also kicking us out. Let's go to the dressing room. Blah, 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 blah. Can I praise them? Mm. Yo, there we go. Delighted, extremely delighted. And team talk. Start second half, please. First highlight of the second half, a throw-in with Sardella to Vitinha. Sardella gets it back, whips it in, but it gets headed away. Maybe Kamara can start a counter-attack. He sure can. There he is, strong guy Lincoln. Whoo, and misses the target, luckily for us. Next highlight, a goal kick for Hank Benitez with the goal kick. Gets headed away, but falls to Carlos Perez. Come on, he's injured, man. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I mean, they could have tackled him, but then they might have won a penalty. So maybe it's good that they didn't. New highlight, Sardella now on the right side of the pitch to Josenir, his fellow right winger. Oh, that was a good shot. I have no idea. Danilo. That was a good shot and an equally good, if not better, save by the goalkeeper. Now Josenir with the in-swinging corner. Ball gets headed away, falls to Danilo again. Again, but probably just take your time guys keep on footballing is that a word footballing keep on playing football learn your English Jochen let's keep an eye out for fitness levels and I am going to sub Sardella for Filipovic uh, and probably in a couple of minutes I'm also gonna have a look at our midfield but for now confirm let's praise him again since we are... Ooh, Soteldo has taken a knock, probably. Let's take him off, because I don't want him to be injured, because he is having a hell of a season so far. Let's get Otavio on, and while we are here, um, let's maybe say Basilio for Danilo. There we go. Ten minutes left, including some extra time. Felipe Jonathan now with the ball. Come on, guys. Don't do anything stupid. And I think we will be okay. Josenir. Sardella goes for the overlap, but nobody has seen that. Basilio takes his time. That's a bad ball, though. Ooh, and he... Awesome. He redeems himself by intervening. There we go. Felipe Jonathan. Back to Basilio. Wow. Did the keeper save it? No, it's a goal kick. New highlight, six minutes left on regular time. Mali with the ball to Tuxet. Come on, intercept the ball, someone. Let's just do an interception and get it over with. No, sir. Mali, can he whip it in? He can, and wow, cross. That is an awesome save. That is an awesome freaking save by Diogo Costa. That is why he's the best goalkeeper in Portugal. Tack set now with the outswinging corner. Ball gets headed away. Josenir once again, but can't reach Greenwood. And there we go. We have beaten Hank 2-0. And that is why we have kicked him out of the Champions League dressing room. What? Tell us disappointing. Did, did I miss something? We are going through, dear Vitor. So I am not going to do that at all. Um... That was a good win for us. I mean, what? Everyone's delighted. Am I, am I not seeing something? And silly old me was thinking that we had to do another qualifying round against Ajax or Monaco. But it turns out that we have qualified for the group stage. So I am curious to see who is joining us. Uh, so we have kicked out Hank and Monaco have kicked out Ajax with penalties. Oh, that's painful. Just a quick in betweeny before we go to the Benfica game. This is the transfer deadline day in game. So I think there is maybe one player that won't be here tomorrow. Uh, where is he? He's a, he's a wonder kid. Juan Luis Cuevas. He was unhappy and I am not sure why. I think it's maybe even like a bug in Football Manager. 
because he was unhappy because he felt treated unfairly by his manager a day after I arrived at the club. So I didn't even talk to him. I didn't do anything. And he felt he was treated unfairly. So I'm not sure what that was, but either way, he kept complaining and there was nothing left for me to do but to say, okay, man, if you really want to leave, I will let you go. Be aware that we have a lot of good forward players. So although I know he's a wonder kid, but I mean, we have three wonder kids at this position. So it's not that I'm really shooting myself in the foot by selling him. But he came in for 16.25 million pounds two years ago. So I thought if we sell him for 23 million, we at least have some money and we have made some profit, which hopefully will make the board a little bit less unhappy if we sell him. So that's basically what I promised this guy. We'll see and <laughs> we'll see what comes in, but I'm pretty sure some activity is going to happen because as you can see, a lot of clubs are after him. Now in the middle of the transfer deadline day, there is also a little thing called the draw for the group stage in the Champions League. Now, I have drawn all the first and the second seats. We are in the third seats pool. Here we are. So let's just have a quick look at where I would like to be. Uh, I immediately see this because Barcelona, yeah. But Moscow, we can easily, not easily, we can beat Moscow. Let me keep it at that. Uh, we can't end up in the Benfica pool. That's a pity. Mm, this is quite hard. Man United and Valencia, maybe? Nah. Bayern, Chelsea, definitely not. Liverpool, Roma, also quite tough, I would say. But Paris Saint-Germain and Man City, no sorry, Bob. So I would go for Group E or maybe as a plan B. Group H or Group D. Let's just find out where we end up. Okay. Group D. Nope. Group E. Ooh, oh, God. Oh, God. We are going to face Real Madrid. I can feel it. <laughs> bam. Group H against Juventus and Atletico Madrid. I say bam, but I'm not sure if it's a good thing. But at least we're not playing Real Madrid or Barcelona or Man City or whatever. I think we should be able to compete, maybe not with Juventus, but certainly with Atletico Madrid. Let's just draw all teams to see who is also joining us in that group. And that is Rosenborg. Me like. Now it's already almost 10 o'clock in the evening on the transfer deadline day and not a single offer has come in for Cuevas. So I'm not sure if they are all going to fire away their offers in the last two hours, but we will probably find out. Well, we did find out because it's September 1st and not a single offer has come in for Cuevas or any other Porto player. So let's just go over the major transfers in the Portuguese transfer window. Carlos Vinicius from Benfica back to Brazil. He went back to Flamengo for, what was it? Uh, 33 million guacamoles. We all know this one. Let's just let, I can't even look at it. But maybe a little bit of a revenge move from us. Mason Greenwood comes to Porto for 25 and a half million, which is still insanely low for Greenwood. Okay, so let's move on to the Benfica game. Now, I'm already very pleased that we have won against Hank and we've qualified for the Champions League group phase. But still, I know we are not, no longer at La Rosa. We are at FC Porto. So basically, that means we can approach any game as a potential victory. So even against Benfica, although I think Benfica is still a little bit above us as far as player quality goes. That being said, Sotaldo, one of our best players, did get injured in that Yang game. He is out for a couple of days, luckily. But unfortunately, he won't be joining us today. Also, we have some like Sardella who are a little bit more tired than usual because the Yang game was only a couple of days ago. So, some rotation going on. This is the squad to face Benfica in the league. Diogo Costa and goal. Felipe Jonathan, Vinyas, Leite and Mandy as our back four. 
Danilo and Vitinha in midfield, Cardoso and Otavio on the wings, and striker duo, same as against Yang, Greenwood and Nunez. And although we didn't see any action in the last minutes of the transfer window, Benfica did, and Man United stole away their starting right wing back. Now I'm not sure this is his replacement. Oh, it's a Portuguese international center back who is now playing as a right wing back. Okay. This might prove to be an opportunity for us because we are. Nah, I'm not sure though. Should we have Soteldo at this point? This would definitely be in our advantage. But it is Cardozo, who is the um, basically our, one of our backup left wing backs, but, but he can also totally play as a left winger. But he's not as good as Soteldo. That's what I'm trying to say. We will see how it turns out. They have Odegaard, they have Getson Fernandez, and they especially have Buadu, who has scored a lot of goals. Well, not that much, but he did score a couple of goals last season. He is a pretty decent Dutch player. Okay, let's go to our dressing room to do this for the fans more than ever. I mean, Porto Benfica, damn, a clash if I've ever seen one. Kickoff. And to be honest, I'm not expecting that much from this game. I think we are going to lose, not to be pessimistic, but more realistic in my opinion. We'll see. Danilo now with the ball to Ottavio. Plays it wide to Felipe Jonathan, who can maybe skip past that man. Can he? Gets it back to Cardozo. There he is, our backup left winger. Ooh, Danilo with a curly shot. Just wide of the target. Okay, first chance for us. That's enough for me. Almost 20 minutes into the game and not a single highlight after that first shot from Danilo. And... Mm. I mean, we are the better team so far after 35 minutes, but not a goal yet. Now a corner kick for Benfica and wow, Ramos was wide open, but luckily heads it over the crossbar. Immediate highlight for us now, Vitinha ooh, gets blocked and I'm pretty sure this is going to start a counter attack. There we go, Boadu, there he is, ooh, come on man. Get him because he is lightning fast, but Felipe Jonathan keeps his cool, although then kicks the ball away. So Benfica are still in possession. Odegaard to Getson Fernandez. There is Boadu again. Odegaard with some room. Awesome tackle by Danilo. Good stuff, man. Ooh, that's an awesome ball. Come on, Mason. Come on, Mason. <clears throat> Seven goal of the season, and I mean... 25 and a half million for this guy is an absolute joke. Awesome assist also, by the way, by Ottavio, which you can see right here. Wow. Very, very good stuff. And Greenwood is an actual killer, man. I mean, this is like the third goal you see in this episode alone, that he just goes one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. And I know that's a thing in FM20, where they usually don't score, but Mason Greenwood does. And so we have reached halftime. We are 1-0 up. We are the better team, which is very, very awesome. Dressing room, tell the boys, yep, I agree. And team talk, start second half. First highlight, Vitinha with a long ball to Greenwood, but in the end it falls to a Benfica player. Gets on Fernandez to Martin Udegaard. Back to Fernandez. And I have a feeling they're going to score at least one goal now. Rafael B whips it in. And wow, that's a bit of a mistake, I would say, by Diogo Costa. Um, what's happening? Oh, it's disallowed. Ooh, 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 ooh. It's disallowed. God knows, maybe it's a, it's a foul on the keeper. Oh, handball. Ooh, hand of God. <laughs> Gonzalo Ramos, naughty, naughty boy, but I don't mind. 55 minutes in, new highlight, Politano with the corner kick for Benfica, and uh, Odegaard gets blocked a couple of times. Politano has another shot at it, but it turns out to be another corner kick. There he goes once again, outswinging ball. Everyone misses it, and the highlight ends. I like those kind of highlights.
New highlight, Tavares with the throw-in. Gets it back. Please lose the ball. Please lose the ball and start a counter-attack, boys. Come on. Yes, Mandy with the ball. Ooh. Diego, Diego Leite, Diogo Costa. Felipe Jonathan now. Has some room. But, ooh, gets blocked. I thought he was going to get himself sent off by tackling with two feet. But apparently nobody cared. Gets on Fernandez now. Come on, boys. Ooh, we're going to concede a goal. I can feel it. There he is. Good save, but rebound gets blocked once again. Sweet lord. Um, okay. Let's keep our cool. Maybe, should I praise him? I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him. We are 1-0 up against Benfica. That is a sight you won't see that much when you play in Portugal. Politano with yet another corner. And, ooh, did Diogo Costa once again make a mistake? Come on, man. Mmm, 70th minute, we are one all, and it was in fact a mistake from the Portuguese goalkeeper of the national team. Hmm. Wow, 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 what a clumsy goal. But it doesn't matter, does it? We are one all, and let's make our first substitution, because a couple of players are probably starting to pass out. Um... Let's take Fitinha off for Wonderkid Diogo Abreu. And let's maybe also... Do I have a spare left wing back? No, I don't. But we can switch Cardozo to the wing back position and get our good friend Cuevas, who probably isn't that mad anymore now since the transfer window is over and he knows he's going to stay here. Let's get him on the left winger position. Come on, man. One all. 10 minutes and something of play left, and Politano with the free kick. Oh, sweet lord. Did it hit a hand? What? No, 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 no. No, 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 not a penalty. Not like this. Not like this, football manager. He goes to the little television and... Oh, God. Oh, God. What's the decision? It's a penalty. Come on, for the love of Aisha. Boo. I say boo. Okay, come on, Costa. You can totally redeem yourself. Nope. Politano scores. We are 2-1 down. I am going to go to attacking and let's say show some passion, maybe? Yep, nothing he can do. That's a very good penalty, though. Skip, please. And they are the better team. They have really... <laughs> Really strengthened up in the second half. Let's do another substitution. Uh, let's get Nunez off for Gomez. But I think this might be it. Can I shout again? But I think the game is over. We are going to lose our first game of the season. Mm. Well, let's just face the facts. We, maybe we are not yet on that level to beat Benfica. Uh, don't be too hard. Mm, I kind of agree i guess Ooh, relaxed and motivated <laughs> and team talk and continue since la rosa have won their game they are now above us in the league table we are in fifth position la rosa's in second and benfica five out of five are still with authority on top of the league table let's have a look at our schedule because we will be back for um let's say i would probably I would love to show you the Atletico Madrid game, for example, but that's only two games away from now, so I don't want to spend 70 episodes on our first season at Porto. So I think we will be back, what is it now, September 2nd, we will be back after one month for the Juventus game in the Champions League, and why not do a League Cup third phase group stage game against Chavez. So guys, that was it for today's episode. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I know I have because I think that the lag and the other issues that we had in the last episode are pretty much behind us by using this new computer. If you've enjoyed it, please leave me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more Football Manager videos. I thank you for watching and I will see you very soon.